Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I thought I'd continue on with a little bit more discussion about the Pegasus Astro Flightmaster. In particular, I want to kind of focus on the brightness profiles. There are several additional brightness profiles, boost and super boost, that allow you to cut down on the time required, exposure time required when taking flats. And we're all certainly interested in spending as little time taking flats as is possible. So I thought I'd cover those two modes as well as maybe some thought process into how we want to approach taking our flats. Let's just go over what we think the objectives are when we're taking flats. First of all, we want obviously a flat taking procedure that's free of procedure related artifacts in the flats. We just want to characterize the optical variation and optical brightness across the sensor. That's it. And some flat taking procedures can introduce their own artifacts, if you will, into our flats and we've got to be careful of that. For example, if you use a computer screen or iPad, there is a fairly fast refresh rate for the screen and if you take flats with too short of an exposure you're going to find that you have random the random appearance of of horizontal bands in your uh, images and so that's a artifact uh, that comes from your procedure and you have to work around that by taking longer exposures there are different ways you can get different kinds of artifacts certainly the t-shirt method has its own flavor of artifacts when you take t-shirt flats in the morning the illumination level is continually increasing because the sun is rising and so if you're taking long duration flats with say a narrow band filter that the first subframe of your set of exposures will have one level of brightness and by the time you get to the end you'll have a different level of brightness and you can normalize those things out but it's still an artifact that we got to deal with so the whole objective when taking flats is to try to get rid of as many of these artifacts as we can before we take our flats and that's one of the advantages that we have with a light panel it's just a constant flat source of illumination it's just that it also happens to be a fairly dim level of illumination the second thing we want is convenience all right we don't want to spend a lot of time uh, setting up to take flats or be confined uh, based on say weather variations we don't we want to be able to take the flats indoors if possible uh, at night or day if possible we don't want to have a lot of restrictions uh, preventing us from taking flats we have enough restrictions when we're taking lights we don't need to deal with that when we're taking flats or at least we want to minimize that and uh, finally uh, we want to minimize the time required to take a set of flats for all of our filters now if you're using a one-shot color camera DSLR for example uh, you just have one set of flats and so you don't have to worry about that too much unless you're also using some narrow band filters to, to pair with your one shot color camera but in the case of, of those of us with monochrome cameras you've got in general about seven filters right you've got the luminance you've got the red the green and the blue and then you've got the sulfur hydrogen and oxygen filters so you've got to crank through all of these filters and grit create flats for all of these filters if that's what the kind of image that you're taking if you're taking an image that that involves multiple of those filters you're going to need a flat for each one of the filters that you're using in that in that round and we don't want to spend any more time than necessary doing that because we got better things to do like sleep and stuff so how do we compensate for the fact that the flat panels in general are fairly dim and you have to use longer exposure times which in turn means that your total flat taking time is fairly long well pegasus astro's flat master has a couple of boost modes in their brightness profiles that allow us to cut down on the amount of time it takes to take flats and i want to kind of show you and kind of put some numbers to what those boost modes provide in terms of reducing exposure times what should we expect for exposure time? Well, this is potentially a complicated issue. Uh, Pegasus Astro recommends uh, greater than three second exposures uh, for some cameras that have a certain type of shutter that uh, it may take a little time for it to, to move out of the way. They are recommending greater than three seconds. I don't believe I have one of those cameras. I have the ASI 1600. Some people uh, report that as you get below one second, you start to see some unstable performance out of some CMOS cameras. Again, I don't believe I've noticed that I've taken a lot of less than one second exposure flats because I've up till now, up till recently, I've been using the t-shirt method and subject to uh, the morning uh, sunlight and those exposures tend to be quite short, particularly for the luminous channel. So I don't believe I've noticed uh, problems with that, but then it could be that I just haven't noticed I have problems with that. Maybe one second is a logical 
a cutoff point if you're not concerned about a mechanical shutter and the three second limit discussed above. So let's say we stick with a one second minimum exposure time that we want. Uh, and of course, your experience with your particular camera, your particular setup may vary and you may be perfectly okay with using a shorter minimum exposure time of one second for a given filter. In that case, we're really talking about the luminous channel. The question is, what is the best ADU level to use? And Lord knows I've shot flats at multiple constant ADUs. My general approach in the past has been to pick an ADU level, whether it's 30%, 40%, 50%, shoot all the filters at that same ADU level, and that would be my set of flats. But maybe that's not the best thing. In fact, it's probably not the best thing. I would go out on a limb and say that probably the best flat ADU level is the one that matches the light ADU level for your light frames. So we're always trying to pull the histogram of our light frames off the left edge to make sure we get a good reading of the background, the tail of that histogram, that distribution uh, is, is still within the measurable range of our sensor. We don't want to clip the dark end. And I tend to be, frankly, a little guilty of pushing my light frame ADU level probably closer to the left edge than I should, in part because I'm a little concerned about blowing out stars on the high end. I would be willing to bet dollars to donuts that the best procedure for taking lights and taking flats is to have a consistent minimum ADU level. Call it 15%. Take all of the lights with a minimum ADU level of 15% and take your flats at the same median level. If we're going to talk about exposure times, we ought to talk about the filters uh, because that's what's dictating our exposure times. Clearly, the luminance filter which has a bandwidth roughly of 300 nanometers from the uh, blue end up to the uh, upper edge of the red end. That's about 300 nanometers. And so it's letting in more light than any other filter that we use. And so that has the shortest minimum exposure time. And if we decide we're going to use one second for that, we would take whatever ADU level we get for one second of exposure with the luminance channel. The RGB channels have about 100 nanometer bandwidth, and I'm showing the filter profiles for the ZWO second generation set of filters that I use. Uh, the red, green, and blue are about 100 nanometers in bandwidth. And so they're cutting out about two-thirds of the light that the, or the luminance filter provides. Hence, if we're going to get to the same ADU level, then it's going to take three times the exposure time of the luminance channel in order to get the same ADU level for the red, the green, and the blue. Things are a little bit worse, obviously, with the sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen filters. In the case of the ZWO filters, those filters have a 7 nanometer bandwidth. And as a result, 100 divided by 7 you got to use that number, 14, to scale up the exposure time for the RGB filters in order to get the same ADU level for S, H, and O. So by the time we take into account the filter bandwidths, it's going to take quite a bit of time to cycle through these seven filters. One of the things that I'm going to start trying uh, going forward is just setting a, a minimum ADU level, call it 15%, but I'm also going to try to stay above a minimum exposure time, call it one second. And I don't care if different channels have different ADU levels. I don't really care about that, although I am going to strive for at least six of the filters to have the minimum ADU level of 15%. And I'm going to take whatever ADU level I get for the luminance channel for one second of exposure. Let's take a look at these boost modes I mentioned. So if you go into the settings section of the Pegasus Astro software that commands and controls the Flatmaster, there is in the settings section a boost of brightness profiles section here where you have the default a USB 2 setting, you have the boost a USB 3 uh, setting, and the super boost also USB 3. So if you're using the boost or the super boost modes, you've got to plug in the Flatmaster into a USB 3 port. Otherwise, you can power the default setting of the Flatmaster off of the USB 2 port. So what I'm showing here is the flats I took with the blue filter, 7 second exposure, a gain of 50, and a constant temperature of 18 degrees C. And then I've gone through a range of different Flatmaster illumination levels, which is a slider on a previous 
uh, panel that's with the software that you can control. And just take, for example, at 80% illumination using the default USB 2 setting, I get an ADU level of about 30%. And if you then go up to the USB 3 setting in the first boost mode setting, you can up that to about 43%. So it's a pretty significant jump. That means that if I wanted to maintain the same 30% ADU level, I could cut my exposure time down from what I had to have with the default setting by 1.5 if I'm using the boost mode. And likewise, if I go to super boost mode, I can cut that exposure time by a factor of two. Both of these boost modes are actually pretty effective. The first boost mode will reduce the exposure time by 35% and the super boost mode will cut it in half. However, there is a bit of a warning and a question you need to ask yourself. Do you want to burn through $430 in 15 minutes? If the answer to that is no, listen carefully. This is the panel we were just looking at. And if you press the super boost mode here, you're going to get up this dialog box that comes up and says, plug us into a USB 3 socket. That's fine. If you press the boost mode, you're going to get the same warning. The thing is, there's this additional little piece of the puzzle here, which is we strongly suggest that you don't use this for longer than 15 minutes because you'll overheat the electronics. Frankly, if I'm overheating the electronics, then I'm not that interested in using a super boost mode. The second thing is this, this uh, the Flatmaster uh, graphical user interface here, at least on my computer, it's, a, it's very nice, it's professionally done, but it's also very subtle. Uh, for example, the settings area up here is highlighted, but the about and the control are not. Now, I don't know if you can see that difference, but it's a light shade of gray versus a dark shade of gray. And so if I'm in super boost mode, I want to have a red box like this around it. I put that box on here for graphical purposes in this presentation, but if I'm actually in super boost mode, then frankly, I want a red box around it because of this warning they just told me about. And also, frankly, I'd like to have like an egg timer ticking down my 15 minutes before I got to get out of super boost mode before I start smelling smoke. For me and my $430, I'm using the default or the boost modes rather than the super boost mode. The whole objective is to reduce the amount of time it takes to take good flats. We bought a flat panel. That's a first step, presumably, in taking good flats because you have a very consistent, repeatable light source. Uh, it allows you to set up an imaging sequence or imaging plan with the proper exposure times that you can just repeat, press the button, and go. And now we just want to have a procedure and a process that allows us to reduce the amount of time it takes to get all of the flats for all of our seven filters. The Flatmaster has these USB 3 powered modes, the boost mode and the super boost brightness profile, and they can cut exposure times by almost a factor of two. So that's a pretty significant increase as we saw. Problem is the super boost profile comes with a little bit of a warning, which is if you use this for 15 minutes or more, then you might just uh, overheat the electronics. Maybe remove the super boost profile altogether if it's that dangerous uh, or tone down the warning if it's not that dangerous. Maybe instead keep the super boost profile, but certainly don't allow the user to click on the next dialog box that comes up that asks, do you want to set this as a default? Maybe just disallow setting that profile as a default so that people don't accidentally set it. Why would we have a dialog box come up that allows us to set this profile as a default? The second thing is I'd like to see a graphical user interface that, that is truly highlights the fact that we're operating in the boost mode. Based on the filter bandwidths and trying to maintain the same ADU level, which is basically how I've been taking flats in the past, you can expect that the RGB filters are going to take three times as long of an exposure time as a luminous filter, and you can expect your narrowband filters to take 14 times as long as the red, green, and blue filters, just based on a comparison of filter bandwidths. So if you took 30 exposures per filter for those seven filters and set the luminance exposure to the minimum exposure time of one second, that would require well over an hour to collect the data for all the flats. Maybe the idea is in having the same ADU level for your flats as you're using for your light frames. And in that sense, maybe we go to an ADU level closer to 15% 
for the RGB and the SHO filters and just take whatever ADU level we get for one second of, a, of exposure time for the luminous channel. If you calculate out the total time it takes to take 30 exposures per filter, now you're down to about 18 minutes which is a fairly significant savings in time. Looking at the warnings that Pegasus Astro is giving me for the Super Boost mode, it might be better to stick with the default or the boost brightness profiles going forward. I, I'm personally going to avoid using the Super Boost mode. Okay, guys, well, that's about all I had for today. I just thought I'd follow up with a further discussion of the boost modes in the flat panel settings. I think they are helpful, but they do come with a little bit of a warning, so just depends on how risk averse as to whether or not you want to use that super boost mode. All right, guys, I'll see you later and clear skies.